gathering together to light the Christ light. I like imagining the angels gathering around us. Thank you. Thank you so much to the team candlelighters. I appreciate it. You, you all did amazing. Oh, what a good team of candlelighters. Worshipping both here in Michigan and Florida and around the world and those who are in our community. You, we are together as one congregation this morning as Faith UCC. We are so glad each one of you are here. This is the day that God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. A few notes about this service today. After the sermon, you'll have an opportunity to honor Mother's Day in whatever way is fitting for you. In joy and celebration and sadness and sorrow and complication and confusion. We want to mark it in a holy way. And Elizabeth wrote that beautiful blessing in your bulletin that she'll offer to you, and you'll have an opportunity to light some candles after the sermon. So for those who are celebrating, happy Mother's Day to you. For those that this is a complicated day, God's peace and grace and healing presence be with you all. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here, you are loved here, for our God is love, and our God loves you. Our God is with you, making all things new. So let us begin this day in a moment of quiet and deep breathing as we come into our presence of our God and worship. We can call each other into worship with the call to worship found in our bulletin as well as on the screen. And our liturgist, Mr. Tai, will lead us this morning. Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship by reading the text indicated in bold. Clap your hands, all you people. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our sovereign Lord. God is sovereign over all the earth. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Let everything that has breath sing praises. Shout to God, God's song joy. Please stand as you are able and join me in the reading of the prayer of confession. O oh Lord, on this day of glory, we confess our lack of trust. While we sing of you, worship over all creation, we have too often acted as though you are powerless in the face of today's events. Our faith is sometimes shaky, and sometimes we wonder if you really are as powerful as we hope to believe. Help us to live with confidence in your presence today, and in hope of life with you forever. Amen. People of God, hear this good news. It says in the scripture that God is love. God is love. That means God keeps loving us, sustaining us, and nurturing us. God's mercy is as wide as east to west, bringing good news to us this morning. So as people who have been renewed by this love, forgiven of our sins, live as people who have peace that passes all understanding, guarding your soul and our relationships with one another. As a sign of that peace, I invite you now to take a few moments of passing the peace of Christ, extending your hand or your peace signs or over your heart, saying the peace of God be with you all, 
And feel free to get to know somebody new if you don't know them as well. Linger in the peace for a moment. The peace of Christ be with you all. Thank you. remain standing and body our spirit as we are able and sing our opening hymn, hymn number 260, Hail the Day That Sees Christ Rise. are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. 
You are witnesses of these things. And I see, and see, I am sending upon you what my Father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple blessing God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite all of the kids and the young at heart to come forward and join us for the children's message. And I am going to need someone who might be willing to play Jesus this morning. Yeah, that one's like, should I or should I not? I know that's a little... Uh, would you like to be Jesus? Okay. Okay, sounds good. You right over here, honey. You stand right here behind Mr. Ty. And then kids, you all look this way. Yeah, go ahead and sit. Okay, so I, here, I want to tell you this story. Um, in the scripture today, I'm going to stand right down. You stay right there for a minute, and I'm going to come down here. Woo, I don't want to step on any hands. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so in the scripture today, you stand right there, Jesus. You're good, you're good. Put your hands up for just a moment like that. Yeah. Do you know in the service when that happens? Anybody know? When do I put my hands up like that? Do you know when? For Jesus, That's, that, is, that is right. At the very end of the service, I put my hands up like that, like Jesus right there. And do you know what I'm doing at the end of the service? That's right. Say it louder. Blessing. That's right. Actually, let's all do it together. Let's put our hands up like that. And big kids, you can help too. This is what Jesus does. You're doing such a good job. And at the very end of his life, when he's been resurrected again, and he's about to leave his disciples and ascend to the, to the heavens, he gives one more blessing. So our Jesus, we're going to follow you, and we're going to follow everybody. We're going to follow our Jesus, and, and you're going to say, God bless you. Can you say it out loud? Oh, that was amazing. And we're going to say, thank you, Jesus. And now, Jesus, you go back there by Ms. Miranda. Yeah, go over there, because Jesus ascends to heaven. And we're all here. Jesus looks at us, and he blesses us. And now he goes on to heaven. And you know what the disciples do in the story? They go back to the temple, and they're praising God. What do you think praising God looks like? What is praise? Yeah, like this? Like that? What else does praising God look like? Like maybe like this too? Maybe smiles? Maybe a high five? Oh, praising God. Yeah, God. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Celeste. That's so good. And so while Jesus, where did that piece of paper go? Oh, here it is. Come back over here, honey. You did so good. Can we thank our young Jesus? Yeah. Thank you so much. I want you to take a look at this. What do you see here? What is this? Runners, that's right. What are they doing? Do you, track. track and field, that's right. Do you know what, what's in their hand here? A tube. A tube, that's right. Look, should I show the big kids? Yeah, let me show them. Yeah. Any of you ever run like this before with the, the, the tube some of you have? Yeah? I, a very long time ago, thought I could jump over the hurdles back in the day, and that never happened. I always walked around them. I was not good <laughs> at track and field. So those of you who passed the tube, this is good. Um, so in running, did you see Miss Karen raised her hand? That's so nice. Raise your hand again if you've passed this little tube before. Yeah, maybe some of you who have done this. What, what are you doing here? Can you raise your voice for us? Passing the baton. So, Miss Karen, I'm going to put you on the spot. Could you stand right there? Let's pretend you have a baton in your hand right there. We're running a race. She's going to run, and then she's going to pass it to me, and I'm going to walk. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to keep the race going. Thank you so much, Miss Karen. I appreciate it. That's what Jesus does 
in this passage in the gospel today. He said, I'm giving you the baton now. You go and tell others about my love. You go and tell others about my peace. You tell your story. Each one of you has a story of faith. You have a story about how you've prayed before, how you've read scripture before, how you've been baptized, or like next week, Lillian will be baptized. You have a story to tell. So Jesus passes the baton and says, keep running the race on my behalf. I've blessed you. So my dear friends, each one of you has a story to tell. And this week we're going to tell our stories and keep running the race that Jesus ran for us. Let's pray. God, thank you for showing us how to tell others about forgiveness, about your love, about your peace, about your compassion. Help us to continue to tell our stories that you first shared with us. Help us to carry the baton and then help us to pass it on to others. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Kids, you're welcome to go to the Rainbow Room today with Miss Elizabeth and team. You're welcome to take this in there if you want. Yep, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. You were a wonderful Jesus. <laughs> my giant may, I, may I hug? May I hug Axel? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Am I good? Oh, yes. Good morning, everyone. Um, it's so great to see you all here. Um, just to let you know, it is, uh, we are reaching the conclusion of the choral season, the choir, and this week is their last, um, their last uh, Sunday with us, and uh, we're just so grateful that you all come and sing and uh, spend their Thursday evenings with me, <laughs> and they all volunteer their time. So can we just give them a quick thank you for everything you do? Yes. Yes. Um, just a little bit of information about the anthem they'll be singing. The text is taken from a, um, sorry, is taken from a book called The Revelations of Divine Love, which was written by Julian of Norwich. If you haven't heard of Julian of Norwich, you may have heard of another woman um, during that sort of era, um, Hildegard von Bingen. You might have heard of her before, yes. Um, so similar to Hildegard, um, she was also a, um, a mystic, so she experienced visions um, and uh, had a lot of writings and uh, the theological writings. And the book that the text is derived from uh, is actually the first book in English that was authored by a woman. Um, so that's pretty neat. Um, and also similar to Hildegard from Bingen, she was also an anchoress, which is um, essentially a nun who spine, uh, spends her time in solitary um, meditation. Um, so some of her uh, theology is quite fascinating if you ever find the time to look over it. So here is Mother and God.
As the choir makes their way back to their loft, I just thank you so much for your ministry. I, I look forward to this day and I get sad about this day because we, you are worthy of so much celebration. You carry so much of the ministry here and our lives are blessed because of them, aren't they? Yeah, we, we're just so grateful. And um, I get lonely up here in the summer without you. Um, so have a good summer break and return home quickly, uh, as in next week um, down there, please. <laughs> and, but also for the fall season, we look forward to welcoming you back. So thank you very much. Um, and I do love Julian of Norwich a lot as well. Um, and some of you know I was up in Chautauqua this week. Um, I was a guest speaker up there on Hildegard. Uh, surprise, I know, surprise. Uh, so I do love these mystics a lot. Before I pray, I want to invite you to get a, a pen or pencil out. Um, and if you have neither of those things, check in the pews as well. There might be some writing utensils. And if you don't have that, feel free to get the note function on your phone out because we're going to do a little spiritual exercise during the sermon today. Um, and um, trust me, it's not too hard, uh, but you, I think you'll enjoy it as well. So, and if you have extra utensils to share, please feel free to pass them around. And Zoomies, you're not off the hook. Uh, you're going to be able to write in what I'm going to ask you to in the chat box at the end of this service. And um, our Zoom deacons, I am going to ask that you read that. Please join me in a word of prayer. May the words of my mouth, O oh Mother and God, and the meditations of our hearts together lead us to you, our comforter, our hope, our salvation, the great mystery, love. In your hope, May these words be glorifying to you now and always. Amen. So this Sunday is Ascension Sunday. I know you've all been celebrating already at breakfast this morning with Ascension cakes and Ascension breakfast, right? That's what you did? Yeah? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, it's a day. How many of you grew up in a tradition that was big with Ascension? Any of you grow up? Some of you did. It's really big in central Pennsylvania. A lot of the UCC churches, actually their win not ours, but their window is the Ascension. Um, a lot of the Mennonite churches have the Ascension um, back up there as well. It's a big day culturally in our area, uh, but it's a mysterious day because Jesus, the resurrected Jesus, has, this is his final moment with his disciples. He comes back to them, and he does two things. First, he comes to them, and he opens their mind and helps them understand the scriptures. Okay, so there's a teaching moment here with this resurrected Jesus. He opens their minds and helps them understand the scriptures. And he says, everything that I've been telling you about, the forgiveness of sins, the healing, the hope, the breaking of the bread, the coming back from the dead. This has all been written about in the scripture. This is who I am. And he helps them understand that. And he then leads them out of town to a place called Bethany, and he lifts up his hands, just like I do at the end of the service, like we did at the children's message, and he offers them one final benediction. The very last thing he does as he blesses them one more time. And then it says that he's carried up to heaven and the church that was gathered that day at Bethany goes back to the temple praising God with great joy. And they head back to Jerusalem with joy in their heart, giving thanks to God for the life of Christ. You know, the Ascension is, is a wild day. On one hand, I, in, in New York, 
my organist was a, a humanist. She had a hard time with this day. She would call it Rocket Jesus Sunday. Um, I, I thought, well, mm, that's one way of understanding it. Um, on the other, it's deeply meaningful that this Christ who came to be with us, God took on flesh in Jesus, became one of us to be close to us, to redeem us, to love us, goes back to the Father, our Mother, the Creator, and prepares a place for us. It's a holy, mysterious day. And in between the teaching and opening their minds of Scripture and the final blessing, he says this in verse 48. You are witnesses of these things. You are witnesses of these things. We are witnesses of the life and the death and resurrection of Jesus. We are witnesses of the hope we have found. We are witnesses of the struggles we have. We are witnesses of our doubts, of our peace, ultimately of our faith. A witness, I know witness is kind of a churchy word, but a witness is no, none other than a storyteller. You are storytellers of these things. That's what Jesus is saying to them and to us. You are storytellers of this faith, like passing the baton. I've given you everything I can. Now it's your turn to pass on the stories and to tell the stories of your hope, your challenges, the way that your faith has shifted. We all have stories. We are somewhat to be human means that we are storytellers. We all have storytellers of, of our faith. We have stories of when we first learned to pray or stories when we first believed in God or stories when the first time we came to church after not going to church our whole life. We have stories of that hymn that when we sing it, it just moves us. We have stories of the older one in church helping the younger one become to pray and believe for the first time. We have stories of baptisms. We have stories of funerals. Our life, our faith is holy stories. And then Jesus does something that I think is really profound in this. He says, you, you, I trust to tell my story. I trust you to tell the stories of faith. I'm going to prepare a place for you now, and now you are the witnesses of these things. You are the storytellers of these things. And Jesus trusts us to keep telling the story. And for 2,000 years plus, that's been happening. And so now here today, we're called to keep telling the story. Legend has it that Ernest Hemingway was once challenged to write a story in six words. Taking up the challenge, because I think there was some money involved in this challenge, he responded, okay, I can write a story in six words. They didn't believe him, but he did. And Ernest Hemingway, legend has it, said this. For sale, baby shoes never worn. Profound story that's only six words long. But Larry Smith in 2006 was intrigued by this idea, by this legend of Ernest Hemingway, and he wondered to himself, I wonder how many people would tell their memoir in six stories, in six words. And so he started this web page, six story six-word memoir, and people wrote in, hundreds and thousands of people wanted to tell their story, their memoir, in six words. In fact, here are some of the stories. Literally, if you go to the six-word memoir website, there's just hundreds and hundreds of stories. Here are some of them that uh, grab my attention. Old soul, young spirit, hopeful heart. One box of tissues was not enough. I like this one. The waterproof mascara was a lie. 
I'm beside myself. Cloning machine works. <laughs> Get it? Yeah, okay, okay. I leave dog panics furniture shopping. <laughs> some of these stories are humorous. Some of them are more heartfelt. So it got me thinking about this scripture in the gospel here, verse 48, when Christ says, you are witnesses of these things. Lo and behold, you are witnesses of these things is a six-word story of faith in itself. This is what Christ is saying to us, a six-word story of faith. You now go and tell your story of faith. And can, and now the modern translation, can you do it in six words? So this is when you take out your piece of paper and your pen and your pencil. And I want you to start thinking about your faith story. Your faith story, not necessarily our collective faith story, but your faith story. How would you tell your story in six words? Um, I started this My Six Word Story of Faith in, in New York, and it went viral. And if you go on Twitter or whatever it's called now, people uh, have written in their stories from all over the world. And here are some of the things that people have written. Fear not, I have redeemed you. Jesus lives, I am never alone. I am stirred, but not shaken. Clever. Clever. Beauty for ashes, peace for despair. From one of my favorite books, Act Justly, Love Mercy, Walk Humbly. Faith is a mystery, not certainty. And here are some of mine that I wrote this week and reflecting where I am now. Jesus loves me, this I know. Baptism holds my faith and doubts. Faith, I've learned I don't know. And I was thinking in honor of Mother's Day and how much I love my mom, um, this one I wrote with what she taught me about faith. Mom taught me how to pray. So take a moment for you to write in your notes or in your bulletin on a piece of paper, how would you write your six-word story of faith, a six-word story of faith. There's many stories of faith that you could write. Mark's going to play just a little bit of music, and I want you to just take a few moments to write your six-word story of faith. Mark? exercise at home this week too but maybe we can have a few people a few brave people and their their loud voice share it with us so I can hear it and then I'll say it in the microphone and if you are at home 
who you who have written your six word story of faith, feel free to write it in the chat box and our Zoom deacons will read it. Anybody want to be brave and share your six word story of faith? Yeah, let me actually come with the microphone. I wrote, grateful to God for son Jesus. Amen. Okay, this came pretty quickly. I wrote, bakes, hugs, gathers, loves in Christ. Amen. Thank you. Do you want to take <laughs> um, the greatest of these is love. Mm, beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Others. Jay, yeah. Came up with two, please. Yeah. So I, I, I came up with two. Um, the first one I came up with this year: God's child, wandering carpenter, teaches others. Ah. But then I came up with bumps and bruises along the way. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Jay. Others back here, you want to share? Yeah. Go tell it on a mountain. Oh, okay. that's good, Wayne. Thank you very much. Others, you want to share? Do we have any at home that would like to share? From Jessica Matthews, it's been scary, but God helps. Mm. From Mark Engel, question everything, have faith in something. Mm. From Angela Kerwin, God's hand holding, I keep searching. Mm. From April Hannon, God, why can't I hear you? And from David Cassidy, desperation, clutching, easing, bumpy, turbulent, and eyeing. Thank you so much, dear Zoomies, for your beautiful honesty of faith and for letting us hear that. We all have stories, and we're called to share our stories. Be honest about it, because Christ is there in the honesty of our stories. So I invite you, as we continue to learn our stories and share our stories to stand as you are able we're going to sing our hymn and then we'll do the candle lighting and our our hymn is i love to tell the story hymn number 522 let us sing together
nobody sings it as good as 80, 90 plus year olds just singing out that hymn. It's, it's, I just love that hymn so much. But you did good. You did good. We, we, we got, but we got more stories to tell. I'm going to invite Elizabeth and the kids to come forward. And Elizabeth has a special Mother's Day uh, blessing prepared for us uh, that she'll lead us in. Good morning. Just digging out my notes. Look at all these beautiful faces that wouldn't be possible without their mamas. Robbie, you want to say thank you, Mama? Thank you, Mama. Let me say thank you, Mama. Thank you, Mama. Thank you, Mama. Thank you, Mama. Can you say thank you? <laughs> Can you say Mama? <laughs> that was very sweet. That was so good. Yeah. Okay, today we have a special Mother's Day blessing, and after the blessing, um, Marinda and Mark have um, a special, some special music for you all, and you will be welcome to come light a candle just to recognize wherever you're at at Mother's Day in celebration, in, um, in the hard times, in the good times, just to recognize um, all of the feelings and all of the things that we have in our hearts today. <clears throat> Receive this blessing from God, our good and faithful mother, who loves us more than we could imagine. Blessed are you whose journey into motherhood was not what you expected. Blessed are you who love children no longer in this life. Blessed are you who love mothers who have passed beyond the veil. Blessed are you who love babies that left the womb and entered into eternity. Blessed are you who long to love babies of your own. Blessed are you who long for reconciliation with a child. Blessed are you who long for reconciliation with a mother. Blessed are you who have loved others' children as your own. Blessed are you whose family grew through fostering or adoption. Blessed are you who are adopted. Blessed are you who are placed in foster care. Blessed are you who birthed a child and entrusted them to the care of another. Blessed are you who survived traumatic births. Blessed are you who bear the weight of caregiving alone. Blessed are you who are navigating the long days of mothering young children. Blessed are you who have traveled the short years and are mothering adults. Blessed are you who have embraced motherhood in any capacity. No matter where you are on your walk with motherhood, today, may you find moments of joy. God's abundant love and healing and joy be with each of you today. Amen. All right. I'd like to invite the kiddos to go with their families for now.
you. Thank you. Beautiful, beautiful lights of those that we honor, those we miss, the complicated feelings we feel today. I know you at home are, might have lit a candle as well, or perhaps there's a candle, a light in your heart. We acknowledge all of those feelings and all of what we are expressing to our God, and our God holds us and loves us and sees us. So beautiful lights. Thank you all, and thank you, Elizabeth. Our worship continues with our announcements, and I know there's a few announcements from our congregation. Jackie, yes, please, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, lead the way, Jackie. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Um, I have to, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there you go. I have an announcement. Um, Sandy Miller asked me to make. Um, on behalf of the caring team leaders, um, Cameron and Cassandra Troy have some have had some car problems. Their car broke down, and they're waiting for a part that will take two weeks to arrive. Uh, I guess they don't have uh, Prime. But before we rent a car, I was wondering if anyone has an extra car we might borrow. We work from home, but use our car to run errands or go to appointments around State College. I know this is a big ask, so no worries if this is not possible. Thank you from Cassandra. Thank you, Jackie. If, if anybody is able to help meet that need of a car for two weeks, um, maybe see Jackie or me, but Jackie's our caring uh, leader representative. And Cameron and Cassandra, we're so sorry about your car. Jesse? Good morning, everyone. I, um, well, this is, I guess, maybe a combo announcement and prayer request. Um, I have uh, surgery coming up this Friday, and uh, I will be in the hospital overnight and um, have about uh, four or so weeks of recovery where I can't really do anything. Um, <laughs> And um, so the announcement part is that I am uh, looking for someone who might be able to help Jess and I at the house. I will not be able to do dog walks or mow the lawn. And she is going to um, be taking care of me. And so um, it's, uh, it's gonna be a lot on her. So first off, um, send your prayers her way. Uh, but what I'm wondering is if anyone would be willing to help by mowing the lawn, um, maybe a couple of people, one person um, at each week over at least the four weeks where I will not be able to actually push the lawn mower at all. Uh, you're welcome to bring your own mower if you have one that's very special to you. Um, but um, we have an electric uh, mower that we, um, we do use a long extension cord for. And um, because we're in Belfont, there is a bit of a hill that requires a uh, weed whacker. And so um, it's, a, it's a little bit of an exercise. I'll just throw that out there. Uh, so if you are able to help us, um, this will be starting uh, next week and then the three weeks following that at least. And um, we would just really, uh, really appreciate your support in uh, the next month. Thank you very much. Brett. Hello, everyone. I have two announcements. Um, one is just about Penguin Packs. So for those of you that don't know, Penguin Packs, we at Faith um, collect, well, we have food upstairs and we pack lunches for preschoolers in the area um, that don't have lunch or don't have a lot of food. They get food at school and then we pack for the weekends when they're not at school. Um, so we've got two more weeks left of all the schools and then we have technically two more weeks after that with one of the schools. So in total, four weeks of packing left for those of you that like to help afterwards, we just go right upstairs and pack. Um, and same announcement as last week, I forgot the prop, but if any of you guys have drawstring bags at home, we would love those. Um, we're even accepting paper bags that just have handles that you can carry around if you don't have drawstring bags. Preferably just not plastic, but we will take plastic. That is our last 
Resort. Turning to a separate announcement, uh, we have Pride coming up. So Pride, June 8th in Center County for the State College community. Um, this is just a, I guess, forewarning or more just an invitation to next week where we will have a collection raising money for Pride. Um, so we have about $1,900 we have to raise, which we could do with the help of all of you guys. So just plugging that, but next week, we would love for you guys to come to church for every other reason, but also to help us raise some funds. And then just general announcement, Pride Parade will be at 10 a.m. on that June 8th. So if you guys are in the area, come out. We'd love some marchers to march on behalf of Pride. I mean, Faith at Pride. Um, and then there's a festival right after. So it's a party for everyone. And that's it. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much, Britt. Um, you have a chance to give specifically to our Pride witness, our Pride story, next Sunday. We are hoping to raise 19, we need to raise $1,900 because we really believe that our, our story, our collective story in the life of State College is important. Uh, and that money will go to our float, our table, our materials that we want to hand out to be able to keep telling the story of faith, to take these words from scripture really seriously and to tell folks, particularly folks who might not have had the best relationship with church, to know that Jesus loves them and we love them and we're here. So that's an opportunity for you to give next week. Also, Emily, can I share? Next week, not only do you want to be here to help raise money for next week, next week, this is exciting, you're going to get tomatoes for free next week. Do you remember? Uh, yeah, I know. Emily, in the very back, the, the, our wonderful saint who is in remission now. Uh, so, yeah, that's woohoo! has been lovingly growing tomatoes for you all. We did this for Pride last, last year, but they're ready for Pentecost this year. So everybody's gonna get their own tomato plant uh, as a gift from Emily, who is, if you go to Tate Farm, Emily's the lead farmer at Tate Farm. Um, and uh, she's let me drive a tractor when I've been there before. So um they they know us there um so emily thank you for your gift to the whole church and the tomatoes will be growing so pentecost and then next week there's a baptism as well lillian's getting baptized so many reasons to keep celebrating and telling our stories am i missing yes yeah please go Hello, I just wanted to uh, say some joyous news. Uh, you guys, I'll be uh, moving to Pittsburgh at the end of the month. And so all the choir know, that's when I make sure you guys are like, oh, where did this lady go? She doesn't come here anymore. Um, but I got a new job in Pittsburgh and we are overjoyed. Uh, as you, some, some people might know, I have a boyfriend in Pittsburgh. So we'll be together, yay. Um, <laughs> but I just wanted to make an announcement. Like I'm looking for any kind of like, it doesn't like furniture that you've been hiding in your storage closets for a decade or something that I can easily break down and transport to Pittsburgh if you have any. So if anything comes to mind and you want to you know, run it by me, just let me know. Um, but yeah, I've just been job hunting for the past three months. It's been very stressful. Uh, but yeah, woo, there you go. <laughs> Thank you. We will miss you terribly and we wish you well. We wish you well, yes. A similar request slash excitement is my partner Sierra graduated um, from their master's program last Sunday, okay. which we kind of didn't think would happen just in terms of like disbelief, but it happened and they did great. Um, so just grateful for that um, and all their work into that program and also prayers uh, and lots of, I guess, just good wishes because we're trying to figure out where we're working and living next because it's not going to be at our current residence but it could be here or dc or california or maybe connecticut so we're really hoping something figures out before the end of our lease yeah. so thank you please send our congratulations to sierra and in our prayers uh, selfishly can we pray for state college yeah okay 
I just asked for permission first. Well, we're moving from our announcements into prayers. Are there other prayers that you would like to share for the whole congregation or Thanksgivings that you would like to share as well as our, from our Zoomies at home? You're welcome to raise your hand. I'll come by with a microphone and you're welcome to briefly share. From at home, yeah. From David Cassidy at home, prayers for his outpatient surgery tomorrow, and he's expressing gratitude for the friends at Faith and Elsewhere that take him to and from the hospital, setting up a meal train and checking up. We do pray with you, Dave, and uh, our prayers continue with you, April, as well. I know uh, this week you have a, um, some more tests, so our prayers are with you, April. Uh, for all of us who have people and concerns and hopes on our heart. We know that God hears us, God loves us, and you can trust that you've been prayed for today. Just being here, you have been prayed for, and those prayers will be with you all week. So let us pray together in the spirit of love to our God. Mother God, strong protector, wise spirit, loving nurturer we give you thanks for your never-ending compassionate love we give you thanks for your wise counsel in our life we give you thanks for the ways you are a soft place for our souls and hearts to rest heal the pieces that are hurting in our life and body Help us to grow in your wisdom and grow in your love. Help us to not close off our hearts to our neighbors in need around the world and close to home. Help us to be students of you. Help us to tell our stories with humility and courage. God, we are all too aware of our own heartaches and the violence and the heartaches of the world. We pray for every child who is missing their mother or whose mother is incapable of being there for them. We pray for your divine mothering presence to protect and care for all the children in the world. We pray for world peace. We pray for the day when fighting and war would be no more. We pray for humble leaders and strong leaders for peace of all the, the people. We pray for the day when the lion and the lamb will lie down together in harmony. We pray for our friends, Barb and Elva Chelman, Wayne and Edna Bicehouse, praising God for Emily Decker and remission, for Schwab, for peace in Ukraine, for peace in Israel and Palestine, for peace in our country and our world, for the concerns in our hearts and our minds, receive our personal prayers in this moment of silence. In the unity of our faith that gathers us all together, we pray together the prayer the Lord taught us. Ever loving God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our worship continues as our ushers come forward. It's so good to see you, Cliff. Welcome back home. And Wayne, uh, as we receive our offering, uh, and our special offering goes to our neighbors in need, we'll sing together our offertory found in our bulletin.
us. Let us pray the prayer in the bulletin. I open my time, talent, and treasure to be of service to you, God. This life is a gift, and we praise you in this offering of our lives. Through the resurrection of Jesus, who points us to new life, we pray. Amen. Let us remain standing in body or spirit as we sing our sending hymn, Alleluia, Gracious Jesus, hymn number 257.
I invite you to come downstairs for coffee hour where you can share your six word story of faith. What would you say? Feel free to keep writing that this week and sharing that with others, for we indeed are witnesses, the storytellers of these things. Next Sunday is Pentecost Sunday, lots of joyful things going on. I invite you to wear reds and yellows and pinks and oranges to represent the holy fire of God with us. Wherever you go next, receive this blessing. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you. May God look to you and bring you peace. Go forward this week knowing how much Jesus loves you. Share that love with the world around you. Go and tell your story, friends. Thanks be to God.